This is, this is, this is. All right, it's April 29th. It is the end of the month. April flew by. We had a Goldfinger. Um, we've been building this monstrosity. You'll see that in the future. Um, yeah, a lot going on. I want to get to your voicemails. Thank you, everybody that bought tickets for Bremerton. Two months. We're going to be there June 28th and 29th. That's coming up this summer. This summer is going to be nice. It's going to be hot. It's going to be... It's going to be uh, I don't know. I, I just, I got a good feeling about this summer. I don't know what else it's going to be. I know it's going to be hot. <laughs> That's all I got. Um, the shows, I mean, I'm looking forward to the Bremerton shows, the no effect shows that we're going to be playing with them and, um, working on a few things. So stay tuned for more, but in the meantime, make sure you guys should check out our new album, find a way home. Um, stay up all night. Not today. Those are come, you know, the two kind of focus tracks that we have. I love all the songs. So no matter what it is you like, that's cool with me. Love it. Uh, if you want to call in, maybe you have a topic, a question, a comment. Um, if you've seen a show lately, uh, if you've noticed anything about you know one of our videos or or you know the new album, I'd love to hear it. it. Doesn't have to be anything like that, but obviously whatever you want to do, call in three six zero. 830-6660. Okay? All right. We've been doing this a while. We're on episode 507. And life is good. Life is good. Um, just uh, rolling with the punches, you know? Let's go. All right. Let's get to your voicemails. Hey, Mike. It's Jordan from West Virginia. Yeah. So I did go to the Philly show to see you. And, you know, I've been a long time MXPX fan, but that was actually my first show ever seeing you guys and you guys killed it super tight sounded good the mix was great the house sounded great um but yeah it was a blast so as far as pizza we went to wood street pizza which i don't know if you know dave portnoy does those pizza reviews uh for barstool sports but uh we like to watch his reviews my wife and i so we went to that spot because he reviewed that one and it was pretty good Pretty good for a late night place. It was open till midnight. Can't complain with that. But yeah, we stayed right across the street from the venue. Walked over, saw you guys. Walked back to the room. Easy. Uh, one thing I didn't nice. get or wasn't able to get because of the line was a show poster. So I just wanted to know if you're going to have any more of those available, or uh, maybe on the merch arsenal, or if you could hook me up with one. But yeah, let me know. Peace. All right, Jordan, thanks for calling in. West Virginia, thanks for showing up in, in Philly. That was a great show. We had a great time. Um, the pizza, you know, that that day I had Philly cheesesteaks um, from a, a Joe's something or other. Um, and then the night, the night before that in New York, we had pizza from Joe's Pizza. It was Joe's and Joe's. And I was like, whoa, that's kind of crazy. But Joe's Pizza is good. It's it's a pretty, pretty straightforward New York pizza style pizza it's it's all the things you would want you go in there there's a few different um there's a few different locations of joe's pizza but we were at webster hall so there's one like around the corner there's like a bunch of stuff around the corner from there but but dave's or uh not dave's dave dave port uh joe's pizza was good i was just there with goldfinger at webster hall had joe's pizza again <laughs> but I gotta say, uh, I think I might have mentioned this in the podcast a couple weeks ago. I don't know; doesn't matter. I'll just mention it. I I found an amazing pizza place. I'm sure everybody's like, "Yeah, yeah, we knew all about that." But Juliana's in Brooklyn. It's right next to. Uh, it's right next to Gary Baldi, Gary Gary Abaldi's, or whatever whatever that's called, which. It, the same guy that started Garibaldi's, I know I'm saying the name wrong. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just, I'm not going to look it up. I'm just, I'm doing it by memory, which my memory is terrible, <laughs> especially with names and pronunciations. But uh, Garibaldi's or whatever the name is of this pizza place, this guy sold his pizza place to these other people um, and ended up, ended up, not, I don't know. I don't know what the deal was, but he just ended up starting his own other place, Juliana's, 
which is probably like his niece or his daughter or his granddaughter. I don't know what it's named after exactly, but it was right next to the place he sold. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like right there. But um, this place was just uh, hands down my favorite New York style pizza I've had ever. And I know there's a lot of good pizza in New York, but this was the best I've had and, and just loved it. So we went twice. We went, we went twice and had, had a, a margarita pizza both times. First time, got a side of meatballs and spaghetti. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. <laughs> and then the, and the second time, so, so the day before the show, uh, me and a couple of the crew guys went to the pizza place. Parking was crazy. Couldn't get, you know, it took forever to find parking, but we got there. We got sat down inside, had pizza. It was great. Had meatballs and spaghetti on the side. Uh, had a root beer. Delicious. Just old style, really qual high quality root beer. And, and then we did the show the next day, had Joe's pizza during the show, during the day. Um, and then I, I gotta say, uh, yeah. Okay. So the night before the show, that morning. So so the the day we went to the Juliana's Pizza in Brooklyn, went inside, had the side of meatballs and spaghetti and all that. So that night, we got to eat again because that was like that was like my first meal. It was like during the day in the afternoon. That night later, kind of like nine o'clock, I went out to this restaurant, had a burger. It was okay. It, it was no, nothing wrong with the burger. The burger was fine, but just. After having Juliana's pizza, I was just like, there's nothing else that's going to be good. It was great. So next day, show, Joe's Pizza. I don't know what else I had that day. This is a food diary, guys, a food diary. And then the last day when I was flying out, oh, well, sorry, we went to Atlantic City. Um, I'm trying to think of what I ate. I ate something at the festival. I didn't go out anywhere in atlantic city didn't just didn't i don't know i just didn't want to go out and do anything so i just i ate granola bars and, and things like that so that was saturday and then sunday flying back home i uh, was um you know had a later flight out of newark and so we had to go from atlantic city to newark and drop some people off and we had like hours a couple of us again and we're just like let's just let's go uh, Moon was with me, Moon Vagine, um, or is it Vajan? Um, anyway, we had to show him Juliana, so we're like, let's go. And we we got parking at our, this buddy of ours, Frankie, gave us parking. Um, he wasn't my buddy, but but he was our, our guy's buddy. Um, and, and we had it again. We sat outside, had two margaritas, had some meatballs on the side. I had a beer that time. I, I got a lager. It was just nice. It just hit the spot. Beer and pizza, root beer and pizza, whatever it is. Both of those are great. And uh, I I was so happy to have Juliana's pizza for the second time. It was, it was wonderful. And I thought maybe, you know, maybe my pizza here in Bremerton is almost as good. You know, because we have a, really, a few really good places. But stylistically... There's only one place in Bremerton that has a similar wood fire pizza. No, there's a couple places. There's there's Tessio. There's um, to uh, Toad's um, Toad House Pizza. Sorry, Toad's. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> uh, there's Evergreen Pizza. So these places have wood fired ovens, and and that's the vibe that Julianas has. And I really like the margarita pizza from Evergreen Pizza. And I was like, okay, maybe it's maybe this is almost as good here. I had it the other day, Evergreen, and it's great. I loved it. But it's just not the same. It's not the same pizza. When you go out east, you go to New York, you go to Jersey, even Connecticut has some – it just has the best pizza. It just does. I mean, there's just no getting around it. So – Highly recommend. Um, it's a touristy place, this Juliana's place, because it's right there, right there in Brooklyn. Uh, it's right under the Brooklyn Bridge. It's going over. So um, it's a really touristy kind of place. There's, um, there's 
people just walking everywhere with their kids and getting ice cream and gelato and it's a it's a beautiful scene really it's like beautiful so america so just wow this is this is this is where we live this is beautiful i i I really enjoyed new york city this last time because the weather and i know the weather's not great very often but finally the weather was good and uh, we had a great time just walking around the city and you know there's not always a lot of free time when it comes to doing shows and and all that so this was one of the one of the rare occasions where our schedule just permitted us to drive a little farther have a little more time to look for parking get that pizza we we mapped it all out we're like all right if we get here in this much time we're gonna have time to get back to the airport drop off the van drop every you know to uber to the airport we're, we're gonna be fine and we were we we made it happen it was awesome I can't tell you how happy I was. I know, I, I think I told this, I was talking about these pizzas like on another episode, but honestly, it doesn't matter because this pizza was so amazing to die for. All right. Uh, Dave Portnoy, yes, I have watched a few of his reviews and I've never gone to any of the pizza places that he's reviewed. Um, honestly, just due to the fact that I just don't have time to, to usually go to places like when I, when I go, you know, I'm at a hotel or a venue in a city, I usually look for something close. And, and sometimes, you know, sure. There's something you really want to check out. Got to take a car across town that happens, but I try to avoid that as much as possible. I try to stay close to the hotel, stay close to the venue. Um, depending on what my schedule is, of course, like, like I said, I mean, not usually going all the way to Brooklyn multiple times um, when there's no business whatsoever in Brooklyn. It's just pizza. So that was um, that was great. So thank you for coming out to Philly. Appreciate that. Um, all the shows have been packed. Everybody's coming out. It's been so much fun. I feel like we've played. Every show is unique. Every show has different something different about it, different guests, different songs different performances different stories um different vibes but it's all been great and it's all been packed and um you know i'm looking forward to bremerton we got bremerton coming up and sold out so thank you everybody um no effects tickets there's some no effects tickets i think for portland um that's june 30th and there's tickets in Ju- uh, July 20th in Denver, Colorado. I think there's still tickets for that. Don't miss that. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be there on the second night in in Denver. And then um, where are we at? We're at we're we're in October. Uh, we're doing the No Effects the last weekend with No Effects the very 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 last weekend where there are like no more shows, and that's in Los Angeles in San Pedro. So don't miss on don't miss that either. Um, I don't know if it'll be quite as epic as the Palladium, but we are huge fans of No Effects. We love them. We're, we're sad to see them go. So that is going to be that's going to be honestly the focus is just. I mean, we're going to play our show, of course, but we're going to be focused on our our friends and um, kind of just experiencing the end of uh, an era and a legacy. Pretty amazing. All right, thanks for your call, Jordan. Let's. Um, Let's get to the next one. Mike, it's Gabe Adami from Tri-Cities, Washington. Huge fan. Been listening since I was about 16. My first show was... um, Actually, I I discovered you guys. I went to a Blink-182 concert with my best friend, Kenny, at the time. He's still my best friend, but... um, we went to that show, and you guys opened for Blink-182, and before they were big, it was amazing, and I've been following you guys ever since. It was at the Nile Theater in Phoenix, or in Mesa, I think. And then there was a, about 10 years ago, my question is, do you remember, um, going to Odessa, Texas and doing a show in that town because 
that was the town I lived in, and I was just wondering if you remember it and if you have any stories from that day in that show. Um, this is my first time calling, so I'm kind of nervous. Um, I met you a bunch of times also. Got you to sign a bunch of merch, and I met the guys too. And then, you know, um, at the San Antonio show for their album, song on that album is heard that sound. That the vibe and the crowd scene to that song is amazing, and it just makes, makes me that show. It's so good live. That's like one of the best live albums ever, I think. But um, I don't know what else to say right now, but say, say cool, man. Talk to you later. All right, Jay. Tri Cities. Yeah, my. Uh I have some relatives over in the Tri Cities, in Walla Walla. I don't know if that's considered Tri City, but it's over near it. Um, thanks for the call. So, tumbled was it Tumble Down in Odessa, Texas, or was it MXPX? Because I'm having a little trouble remembering which is which. I know we played Lubbock, Texas, with MXPX Lit open for us, the band Lit. Um, that was a lot earlier than ten years ago. Um, I'm just trying to remember if it was Odessa, Texas. What I remember about Odessa one is the last picture show, you know, that movie, that book I read, I read the book and really enjoyed the book. It's, it's one of those just American, it's a piece of American literature. You know, it's, you, you read this book and you can practically see the tumbleweeds going across the road in this like podunk town in texas there's nothing going on and people people are driving you know you got to drive all night long to get to the next town it's just like everything's so far that's the vibe i get from from odessa from te from west texas so windy the wind just never stops um it is a, a place where you have you know you 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 get fortified when you spend time in West Texas because it is so windy and so the gusts are just going to knock you over. You have to stand tall and proud and strong. But um, if it's the Tumble Down show when we were in Odessa, I remember we played at this thrift store, like a, like a vintage store that just put on a show, you know, for us. And, and there wasn't a lot of people there. It was um, off the beaten path for sure. It was independently promoted, and that those tumble down days were all very indie, and everything was much smaller then. But um, if it's the MXPX show that I'm thinking of, there was one show we played. I want to say we played a show with. Um, uh, it was an outdoor venue, and Chiodos was we were we were main support for Chiotos and their bus broke down and so they had to ride with us uh, some of them rode with us on our bus and and uh some of them rode in some rented cars or something like that I, that's what i remember about that show um it's funny you mentioned the blink shows you know us you know we 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 opened for blink on that tour we were all over Boise, Spokane, Washington, Boise, uh, Boise, Idaho, uh, Pocatello, Idaho. I think um, there were there was just like a lot of random cities that we played. We also played Cincinnati and Minneapolis and you know all over. But um, that was a great tour. I mean, it was packed. It was Blink One Eighty Two was really big. You know, getting bigger and bigger. We were doing really well ourselves. Um, so it was just, it was a no-brainer. People were discovering us just left and right. It was, it was a great time. All right, let's, uh, let's get to another call. Thanks for your call, by the way, Jay. I appreciate it, man. Um, all right, here's, let's see what's next. Mike, it's William from Birmingham yet again. <laughs> um, kind of random question, but... I was thinking about different uh, times that you know, that MXPX songs have appeared in uh, 
kind of other types of media, like movies and commercials and games and stuff like that. Um, I was thinking about it because I remembered the reason that I first heard about MXPX was, uh, I think I was eight years old, maybe 2003 or four. And my dad got me a snowboarding video game that had just came out called SSX3. And it had Play It Loud on it. And um, that was the first time I ever heard MXPX and the rest is history. So that's the main one um, I can think of. But I've, I'm sure y'all's songs have been in countless other things. And you've probably talked about them on the show before. And I just haven't heard it or forgot. Um, but what are some of your favorite ones, uh, your favorite, uh, appearances, for lack of a better word? Um, which ones are you most proud of, um, that your songs have appeared in? I'd love to hear about it. Talk to you later and I'll see you, um, at Buckhead Theater soon. Cool. Heck yeah. All right. That's a great question. And there's a lot, there's a lot that I, Honestly, I wish I had a list of of what we've done, you know. Um, but I'll try to remember some. I would say, you know, most notably, we were on a Diet Pepsi commercial during the Super Bowl. And to be honest, I don't even remember who played that Super Bowl. <laughs> it was like we were so focused on our album. We were so focused on everything we were doing right then and the commercial and I wasn't paying any attention to football. Like not one lick, not one bit, not it not at all. Um and I I don't even remember if I watched the Super Bowl that year. I think I probably did. I I, I don't know. But all I was focused on was that commercial. We were on that, you know. Amazing. Amazing that we were on that commercial. So uh, we were the, for those that haven't seen the, the commercial, it's it's a band playing this big festival show. And it's MXPX. It says MXPX behind us. And there's a big mosh pit. And there's a kid and a dad. And there's a dad that's moshing. He's like, moshing. He's like, you know, talks to the kid. Hey, have you seen your mom? And the kid's like, you know, freaked out that his dad's in the mosh pit. And the kid's like, no, or whatever. And the mom's like, woo, somewhere else. It's just a fun, funny little commercial. Um, now, that's probably like our biggest commercial, biggest sort of other media we've done. Um, we were in, our music was in a um, Nissan commercial Nissan, in, in Japan, which was a really big campaign that played all over the country for many years. And so a lot of people know our song Broken Bones because of that commercial. Um, it's a huge song in Japan when we play it. It's one of our biggest hits. And then here, people don't really know it because it's kind of a B-side. But it's just a fun BMX-style gang song, you know. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, there, like you said, SSX three. That was a great video game. That was really, really well done. Um, we were in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, the the one from twenty twenty one. Twenty no twenty. I guess it would be twenty twenty. It came out, um, and it's got Let's Ride on it, and that that was a big, really big for us in in the newer era. Um, we've been on a ton of video games. I, I, I'm trying to remember all of them. We've been on a, um, a surfboard, uh, Sonny Garcia's international surf competition video game, something like that. Um, movies. I mean, there's so many video games. I can't even remember them all. Um, there was a, a racing game that was pretty pretty cool that we were on. Um, this. A video game called Prey, P R E Y. Um, it was like a Native American story about this hunter that like would go out and try to. I don't know what it was exactly, but on the jukebox you could MXPX would play. Um, that was a song that I wrote specifically for that game, and those were in the years where I had a lot more time on my hands to do random things like that, but. Um, yeah, there was that. There was a. I, I want to say MXPX was on. Um, 
uh, what's that game where everybody fights and um, it's a it's a new game. It's like modern. It's not Minecraft. It's not Roblox, but it's like a fighting game where people would do the dances, like all the dances and stuff. Um, it's just I don't know. I just can't think of it right now. But um, we were in we we're in that game for a while. <laughs> so many games uh movies so many movies uh harold and kumar go to white castle um a bunch of like new york minute um you know it's just on soundtracks and stuff like we were actually in a movie called wuthering heights which is a, a readaptation of a classic novel and uh, made into a movie mtv movie now we we went to Puerto Rico to shoot that, and Catherine Heigl uh, was uh, the main star, as well as um, Mike Vogel. Michael Vogel went on to become a really great actor. He's been in a ton of things. He's in, he's starred in TV shows, and he's been in a lot of things over the years. It's kind of cool. Um, this other guy, Johnny, Johnny was a, was the other guy. Um, I don't know what he's been in aside from that, but uh, trying to can't remember his last name right now anyway you guys you know how my memory is it's the worst um that's a couple there's I mean, there's way more i mean i did an interview with about video games um where we just talked about all the video games mxpx has been in and and um that's got a pretty extensive comprehensive list of video games i, I think i actually like researched it for that <laughs> But uh, you can find you can find that it's like I don't know what it's called Celebrity Gamer I think it's called. All right, um, all right. That's all I can remember. Let's let's listen to some more. Uh, next voicemail. My, this is Luke Thomas calling from Scranton, and just wanted to say we were at the Philly show this last weekend, and it just blew us away. Uh, my wife, my son. It was his first show ever he's a huge mxpx fan and just couldn't wait to get there and just want to say thank you you the ataris they were incredible as well the set list you guys did just amazing and uh thanks for bringing in like uh stuff off your new album too cautious optimistic that's my what uh, my my son's favorite song and he just went crazy we had such a great time. Union transfer is amazing as well. And I can't wait to see you again when you get on the Upper East Coast. Thanks for all you do. Love your music. Keep rocking. All right, Luke. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, um, Scranton, you know, we've played Scranton. We played Scranton with no doubt many years ago. I think it was 1997. So... <laughs> I always think about, of course, The Office. Everybody always thinks about The Office when we're talking about Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, man, The Office. What a what a great show that was. I don't know if you guys ever watched that show. I, I was never, like, addicted to it, but I, I really like that show. It's it's great. It, it's funny as hell. Anyway, all the all the characters are funny, and, and I'm sure The Office thing, you know, the... the um, just the whole business, like going to work, being in an office with people that are also working, you know, the corporation thing. It's just, it's something that I never really took part of, but I certainly appreciate it. Um, office Space, the movie, is one of my all-time favorite movies. Like, as far as a comedy like that, it's just uh, Grandma's Boy, Office Space, uh probably happy gilmore like when it comes to like comedy straight up adam sandler style kind of thing you know like i love those three movies love it so uh thank you for coming out to philly cautious optimistic is one of my favorites too uh love doing it it's just a fun song it's just some fun observations about my own weird behaviors and um you know <laughs> We enjoy it, you know. It's like, you know, we're, we're out here supporting the new album, and um, we're only going to be here now, you know. Now we can't 
the future doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. Like it might exist someday, but I, you can't can't ever really get a guarantee on that until you get there. So living every day like it's my last kind of, uh, you know, as far as tours go, you know, set lists, all that, always trying to switch it up a little bit. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you want to re- retain somewhat some of the the framework that you set apart for this tour. So like each show is different, but also there's a framework to it that has a, I don't know, a certain, certain feeling, a certain vibe that's like, okay, you're never going to get that exact thing again. You're going to get good vibes every time, but, but each time it's going to be different. So thanks for bringing your son, your wife, the whole family. Love to see multiple generations at the shows. It's just, it, it really brings a smile to my face and, and, and it's hard to make me smile. It really is. And I know that doesn't seem right because on the podcast, I smile a lot, but, <laughs> but when I'm, when I'm, when I'm working, when I'm out there, like concentrating on MXPA stuff, I'm like so serious about it. So like when those things break through, it really means a lot. So uh, thanks for your call, Luke. All right, let's do one more, one more voicemail. Hey Mike. Uh, Discovered your podcast. Uh, my name is Isaac. Uh, saw you in Denver on April 5th, and I just wanted to thank you for putting on such an awesome concert. Uh, my daughter, my 13-year-old daughter, came with me. It was her first punk show, and I saw you for the first time. I saw MXPX for the first time in 1996 at Selma in San Diego, and it was... Uh, Incredible experience, and it was cool to be able to bring my daughter for her first punk show to see you guys in Five Iron Frenzy in the Ataris, and saw you guys a couple times uh, over the years. I saw you in Boston in 1999. I saw you in Denver right before COVID started. You guys always put on such a great show. Uh, I guess I wanted to ask you, have you had the experience of bringing your kids to their first show and um who was your first punk rock show that you went to and who did you bring your kids to uh for their first show and do you think that they enjoyed it as much as uh, as you did i remember when i was when i was 14 years old at selma was my first club i was terrified i got roughed up a little bit um I was having a great time and I was scared shitless at the same time. So, uh, I don't think my daughter had quite the same experience, but, um, uh, I know she's going to remember that for a long time. So I appreciate you setting up this voicemail line and I'm really enjoying the podcast. Later. Thanks for the call, Isaac. Denver was such a blast. We had a great time, you know, being up in the, in the altitude. Um, we always worry about that. Like, is it going to affect us? And, and, you know, it does a little bit, but overall, everybody just, it's fine. We just go through it and rock and grit our teeth and make it happen. And, and, you know, Denver is always a great crowd. So thank you for coming out there. Uh, the Soma in San Diego, it's probably a different place than exi- what exists now because I think the Soma changed locations, but it used to be this just like big cavernous room. Um, where it reminded me a lot of DV8 in Seattle, which I'm sure you don't know what that looks like or looked like, but just a weird, a big room where like kids were just in there doing whatever it is that kids do. Um, yeah, got that vibe dark, you know, I think then, yeah, I think there was a balcony. Yeah. It's really hard to, to remember all the details on that room, but it was, uh, it was the punk rock place to play and, and, and it wasn't tiny, but it was just crazy. <laughs> um, you know, I love, uh, like I said, you know, in the last call, it's just, I love seeing the generations. I love seeing kids coming out there with their parents. And, um, I finally got to bring our kids to a show, uh, my wife and I. So last year, um, bumper shoot, which is in September, usually in Seattle, Washington, the descendants were playing with Jawbreaker and we're like, let's, let's take the kids out, you know, cause it's during the, it's not a late, late show where they'd be going on at like 10 at night or nine at night. It was going on at like six or seven. So like, okay, let's bring them out. And they got to s- see the descendants from the side of the stage 
literally right there watching the descendants that was their first show and we kind of waited because we wanted their first show to be something cool so we just we waited to bring them to something really cool the descendants and um they saw mxpx um about a month later they saw goldfinger and mxpx in vegas at when we were young fest came out for that um had a great time they're going to see mxpx in bremerton coming up uh, this summer so they're looking forward to that i hope they're looking forward to that anyway um, I'm looking forward to that. So um, we have started started doing the shows, and they've they've seen a, a few other shows aside from that, but those are the notable ones. And um, when I started going to shows, it was my first show show was U two. It was at the Tacoma Dome in Washington State here, and the Pixies opened. So the Pixies came out started rocking did their set and then u2 came out and did um it was their octune baby album it was whatever that that zoo tv tour was um to support the octune baby album which was a great album to be honest it was um really really well done um so that was early on i had long hair i was a skateboarder um i i definitely wanted I was interested in music, but I didn't know, you know, to what to to what extent. So there was a, a few other acts early on that I saw. One was uh, the Daryl Mansfield Band, and they were a metal band, much like uh, um, Armored Saint, kind of like that, you know, like really metal. Uh, I think Daniel, it might have been a different show, but I think Daniel Amos opened for them. I saw them at some theater in, in Tacoma. And the same theater, I also saw the Res Band, the Resurrection Band. Uh, didn't know their music, just, you know, uh, somebody I knew was going. And my mom was like, hey, why don't you go? Um, saw Social Distortion early on, kind of, kind of. It was at like a skate competition so i didn't even know who they were <laughs> um so i don't even count it but but um my first punk show like if you don't count local because i saw um i saw some local punk bands play bad juju was was the main one and but those weren't real shows it was like parties and independent shows um, which is kind of how I learned, oh, you can just put on a show. You don't have to have permission. You can just do it. Let's go. Um, you just have a little money to rent the PA. And, and back in those days, I didn't even rent a PA. I just borrowed a bunch of guitar amps, put them up as low to the gain as possible so it was clean, uh, and then turned it up as much as I could before it would start to distort. Daisy chain those amps, there's your PA. Boom. So I still pretty much live my life like that where i just solve problems as i go as i just figure them out as i go but um besides those early local shows the first punk band i ever saw play was all all came to seattle washington um it was i was in junior high still it was ninth grade i think maybe it was even early maybe it was eighth grade but i think it was ninth grade uh took the ferry over and to be honest, I'm pretty sure I was by myself. I don't know. I don't remember being with somebody. Had to have been with somebody, but it wasn't. I didn't know Tom and Yuri yet. Like, that was the next year that was going to be happening. So I went and saw all. I was blown away. It's where I discovered that I wanted to have a Stingray, uh, you know, Ernie Ball Stingray bass. I didn't know it was Ernie Ball then. I didn't know it was Music Man. I didn't know what it was. It was just that bass. I want it. And it was that show that I discovered that. And um, there was just something romantic about going to that show, seeing seeing those grown men on stage play. I'm a kid, and I'm just like, this is a life, really? This is wild. Like, And, and it wasn't even like, I want to do this. It was, I want to play music. I want to, I want to write songs. I want to perform songs. And those sparks really, really catch fire, and they catch... They catch that flame going, and, and um, I was just off to the races after that. I was just in my bedroom writing, practicing, 
doing things. Um, that was inspiring for sure. And MXPX started the summer before our 10th grade year in high school. So I was in ninth grade, went to go see all at the OK Hotel, which is no longer around. Um, and that's something I kind of regret. I never got to play the OK Hotel. It was gone before MXPX was could fill the place, you know, could go there. So, hey, you know, you win some, you lose some. We played Rock Candy a bunch, which is gone now too, uh, who, who I saw like Bad Religion with. Uh, sorry, I saw Bad Religion play there a bunch. I saw a bunch of punk bands play there, and we also got to play there a couple times. And we got to pack the place out. So uh, that was um, that was always cool. So yeah, that's that's what I remember um, back in those days. There's there's definitely some more detail in there that I I'm sure I left out. But um, that that really that all show really kind of got me got me going. And and it's not like I went over to the OK Hotel a bunch of times and saw a bunch of shows there. Like. I saw all, I was into it. The whole pl- the place itself was just so cool. Like the venue it just made me feel like I'm part of the scene. It, it was just, it felt real. And Yuri and I went to go see the, the dead milkman at the OK hotel. We were outside. We didn't have tickets. We were in line to get tickets turned away. I tell this story on stage sometimes and it's just, Ah, devastating. Like, what would have happened if we would have gone into that show? Like, I, I, we, we would have seen greatness. We could, the Dead Milkmen at that time were great. They, they were selling out these shows. They played, they had these songs, Bitch and Camaro, uh, Big Lizard in My Backyard, Tiny Town, like so many great songs that would have been amazing to see live. So, um, yeah, I regret that, but, um, yeah, well, I had a. I went and saw a lot of local shows, a lot of parties, a lot of Grange Hall shows, Boy Scout Hall shows, some church shows. Um, honestly, the church shows kind of started when we started doing shows at churches because, you know, I was just like, hey, why don't, they're not going to charge us rent for this. We can just, they said we can do a show here. You know, I, we did a show at the church that I went to. We did sh- shows at other churches that we would just like go and ask them if we could do shows. So we just used those churches and vent and basements of churches for venues back early early days and it worked you know it really worked and and it was a place where people could go they didn't have to worry too much parents didn't worry as much dropping their kids off at, at you know the okay hotel was a venue that was like legit and like people were smoking cigarettes outside and drinking beer and and you know doing what adults do and then we're kids going there going oh whoa this is crazy so <clears throat> good times, <laughs> good times. Times are good right now. I love seeing the generations. I love seeing parents bring their kids. I love seeing kids bring their parents. You know, it's um, it's it's all part of just like a a big community of people that that love live music that are have an open heart. Um, I really feel like MXPX fans have more openness in their in just in their personalities they're open to other people they're they're nice to people they're they're kind uh they're more gentle um i think that's a good thing i mean obviously there's there's some mxpx fans that throw down and get in fights and beat people up too you know that happens um but uh i appreciate people that are open and warm and friendly and are just happy to see us. You know, I love it when people come up and say, Hey, you know, thanks for doing the podcast. I've been listening. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. It like blows me away. Cause I always feel like there's nobody that's even listening to this podcast. Right. Because I'm just talking to a screen, I'm talking to the, the wall for all I know. But, um, but you guys really are there. You're listening and, and it's not just you. It's, it's a bunch of people out there listening. So much love to you all. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the new album too. MXPX find a way home. If you didn't already check out that um, the solar eclipse insert, kind of cool. MXPeaks.com. We got some new new items up there. Um, there was a question somebody was asking: Did did we have show shirts from? I think I missed answering that question earlier. Show shirts from like Philadelphia. Let's just say show shirts from anywhere: Florida, Atlanta. 
Philadelphia, Denver, Salt Lake. If we have any left over, they will end up in the merch arsenal within two to three weeks after a show. Um, so right about now, you should be seeing any leftovers at mxpeaks.com. But you got to go check it out because we don't we don't really advertise it. It's kind of, you know, we just we're always putting stuff up, and you know, if you don't check, you might miss it. So uh, I hope I uh, hope you get one. I appreciate it. If you guys can, when you're at shows and you really want something, get get merch early because it gets so crowded at the end of the night. Everybody wants to get their stuff, and a lot of the stuff does sell out. Um, but we appreciate it. You know, we obviously we try to have as much merch as possible to where we don't sell out, but we also don't have a ton left over. It's a it's a math problem, but um, sometimes we get pretty lucky with it. Pretty good with it. Um, all right, that's it. MXPeaks.com. Appreciate you. Shout out to Bob McKnight. Much love to you. Thank you. If you see his post on the MXPX, uh, sorry, if you see his post on the Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group, please love it, like it, whatever. All right, that's it. 360-830-6660. And if you want to submit your song, you can submit that with a YouTube link to the Mike Herrera Podcast Facebook group. Okay. Thank you. Peace.